Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPP Nets video series on C++ multithreading and this video is about move threads ownership. So in this video we will learn like what is moving a thread means and why do you really have to do that and why we are talking about moving a thread not copying a thread and stuff. So keep watching till the end and you will have all these doubts cleared. So first of all, why to move a thread like not copy? So the answer is whenever you create a thread, let's say you created thread in this scope and this is your thread d1 then in that case this is the owner of this thread okay and now if we'll talk about copying meaning copying this thread from here to here but copy means you will have two instances of a same thread but that is not possible so you can move one thread to another thread i mean from one scope to another scope the same thread but then this thread won't be available in this scope so that's why copy is not an option. And the second is why you have to move like why move? Why can't you just create a thread in some domain and then just live with that? Actually, you can't. If you'll see bigger systems, the requirements are like n dimensional. You can't predict how big a requirement can be and it can go from a simple small application to a big server. So if you talk about a server, then generally what happens, let's say you have a main thread which will create threads and it will pass on the ownership to another let's say scheduler so it created a thread t1 and then it will pass this thread to the scheduler and like this it will have many threads now main thread was just used to create a thread now scheduler will use different techniques to schedule those thread and that could be by any means, meaning you want to schedule threads because of the synchronization or for any reason. I know this is a hypothetical example, but you can assume any scenario where you have to create thread at one place and send that thread. How you send data members and let's say you are sending some data members by reference so that you can fill that data member in some different functions, right? Where it will make more sense. So similarly in threads also, these kind of scenarios are so much possible and while I will show you the coding I would show you like the actual use case like where you would need moving or let me tell you that scenario here let's say you want to create an array of threads or vector of threads you will have t1 t2 and t5 and this can go on and on so in order to copy that thread object from there to here it will be a big mess if you're not moving it to this array if you're just keeping as a pointer or reference, then you will have to deal with so many things with the scope. I mean, for simple terms, it will be very hard to manage threads if you are keeping list and all that. Because the moment thread will go out of scope or something, then it will go and get destructed. But what if you want to control that also? So, so many things are there where you can get stuck if you don't move. So let's quickly hop onto the code and I'll show you. So here I have taken a very simple example. I have workers vector list you can see this and i'm creating these thread t and moving this t to workers vector and the moment you know the moment you create thread it starts running and now i'm collecting all those threads in a loop from 0 to 9 and pushing all those threads to a vector now they no longer belong here if i would have not moved here then the moment it will hit this curly bracket, it will try to destruct itself. So stuff like this was not possible without moving. I mean, then you will have to do a hell lot of hacks, which is of no good. So this is a very simple example where you can use move and manage things so neatly. So this is creation and collection part. And this is for you have to call join on every thread, at least detach or join before actually thread is going to get destructed. So this is that part. So this is for each loop. For each and every thread in this, we are calling join on those threads. See how neat it is. And one more point. Let's say you are moving this workers vector from here. I mean, from this scope to some different scope, you are passing this or moving this from this scope to some another scope. Then all these threads will also get moved. That's why you get so much of benefit if you consider moving your threads and so much flexibility. So let me quickly run this and we'll end this video. So see, so you know if we will create threads in loop, then you can see this, it is going to be so random. If I will run this again, see at least 0, 1 and then 
2 is getting printed here, 3 here, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So I'm passing this variable i to this worker thread. So it is printing that. But it will it can be so jumbled because they are going to act as a parallel running threads. Because at a moment there can be one or more threads running at the same time. So if I will run this again, see now this time output is so different. And if I run this again, see every time it will change. See, I'm running and it, it is changing like anything. And you keep on running, it will give you different, different outputs. It means it is functioning well. So this is how you can pass, or I should say rather move threads from one domain to another domain or from one scope to another scope and manage accordingly. And sometimes it is best to pass threads in different classes so that those classes destructor will take care of destructing those threads. So then it will be well scoped because thread can be created at any place. See, this is one scope. You will create a thread here. And if you don't move to some different domain where you are actually using it and you where you want to actually control it, it will be very hard to manage scope wise because you may want to end that thread, let's say zero thread or first thread or second thread. But you won't be able to do that unless you come from that domain to here and your program actually finishes. But by moving it, you have the control in that domain to do anything with this thread. And you can put join at specific places where you really want them to be and where they really make sense. Because the moment you hit join, until unless that thread is finished for what it is joining, it won't allow you to go ahead, right? Then it is quite tough to manage multiple threads if you don't use move. I think these many examples are actually more than enough to understand that the use of move with thread is actually quite usable. And if you have more points to throw on this topic, you can put that in comments. We can discuss there and it'll be fun. So I think we are done here. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next videos. Bye bye. Take care.